Simon Brown speaking. As I said, this is our follow-up to the CFD trading system we did. It follows on from the bootcamp sessions. The, the process is quite simple. You need to have gone through the bootcamp videos. There are 12 of them. So it's about 12 hours of content. Bootcamp series is the initial part. We've now moved on starting uh, July last month. We move into what we call the masterclass. And each masterclass will be in two parts. The next two, as I said, uh, 16 August uh, and then the follow-up on 29 August and then 20 September and the follow-up on 5th of October. And what we do here is we come back and follow it up and we say, well, we did the theory, now let's go and do the practice. So a quick recap of the system rules. We're only looking at top 40 stocks because it adds liquidity. We're only taking long trades because short trades are, to my mind, uh, overly risky because of the volatility involved. Uh, so if a market is generally all going down, we'll just move to cash. 2% uh, risk per trade. You can find that in the in the earlier bootcamp video. Uh, maximum portfolio gearing of two, <coughs> excuse me, and that's also in the bootcamp video. Uh, we're going to use a two-step entry system, a weekly chart, MACD is your trigger, and then daily chart for your entry and exits. And of course, as always, aiming for perfect trades. So what we did when we went over the process a few weeks ago at IG, we came up with two stocks that we would have been in trades in, Aspen and Mr. Price. There certainly were others. But if I go to uh, the website here, we will hunt through them. And so let's go and first of all touch on those two stocks. Then what I'm going to do is roll through. I spent my Sunday going through the entire top 40 looking for signals, couple popping up. Um, we got time here. We also got time for questions. If you've got a stock you're particularly wanting to look at or something, uh, fire me a, a question. It's going to have to be in the top 40. If it's outside the top 40, it's outside the ambit of this of this particular uh, trading strategy. But so we kick off with Aspen, where we had an entry at about 333, if memory serves me correct. So this is Aspen. We are currently long Aspen. Uh, and let's find those initial stats. What did we have as our initial stats? So Aspen entry was two was 333 and stop was 295. So we got in 333, uh, 295 was the stop. Uh, the question is now, where do we put the new stop? Now, We've dropped to a daily chart for the for the stops as they sit right now. And there are a couple of points. So this chart looking a little bit bearish, double top there. We're making new lows here. The question is how far down. So where's the obvious place? So initially, the stop was moved to 320, which is just that gap there. So any downside, I would expect to go down to the 320 level. The question being is, do we want to ride it that much down? Uh, basically take a, end up taking a loss on the trade after a 10% gain. My inclination would be to move the stop to around 340 or there's about. If we're hitting that 340 level, man, we're going back to 320. In which case, get the heck out of Dodge, uh, bail the trade. You know, Once we're at 320, then who knows where we go thereafter. To me, I'm looking at probably putting that stop around 340, which is halfway through that break candle. It's a nice level. We can see lots of areas. So on Aspen, uh, we would have been in the trade. Stop would now be at around 340, which puts us seven bucks in profit. Not a heck of a lot at all. But hey, Profit is profit. We take it with both hands. And it's early days for the trade. The other one was Mr. Price. Uh, and if we go type the code name over in the side over there, up it pops, shows the whole screen. I just want the chart. You hit that little button there. So there's my initial stop loss. Do we want to move the stop loss higher? So Mr. Price has not gone very much at all. It's certainly, it's been trending higher. We got in, if, if memory serves, probably around about, yep, April or else you got into that candle there. We're in, uh, do we want to move our stop any higher? I, I, I'm always loath to be aggressive on stops. I'm comfortable with the stop. The stop level should be 189. Uh, and I'm comfortable with, frankly, leaving it still at about that level. If we see Mr. Price take off again and, and break out above that sort of 227, 228 level, which is the, the sort of the high that we've seen a trade at recently, if it can break that, then I would probably look to move the stop. And I'm going to add a separate line. Um, I would probably look to move my stop to around that point there, which is about 204. Um, and then we see how it goes. But for now, comfortable with Mr. Price and where it is in that particular space.
So let's go through a couple of stocks that popped up on my radar. Um, and then, as I said, I mean, if, if you want, we can go through. There are a couple of top 40 stocks. There's absolutely no point at looking at. Richmond, Intu, uh, Investec, Mondi, Omils, uh, uh, Brates, Capcos, etc. They just, or were they my maybes? But so th there's a bunch of stocks that are just not worth it. And then there's four that really, really caught my attention. So let's kick off first with Netcare. Now, remember, we go watch list. We got top 40 constituents. So I'm just going to keep that open. It just makes my life easier. And the first one I want to have a peek at is Netcare. Now, this is the homework that gets done on the weekend. So I did all this on Sunday, went through my entire top 40. Once you've gone through the entire top 40, it's a one-off process. Now you've done it. Now you just sort of keep your notes. First thing, my chart went back to daily because I was looking at stop losses. So reverted back to weekly. I have a standard MACD down there. And what we are seeing, uh, it's not yet turning. So what we're seeing is that MACD hasn't yet crossed. How do I know? Because I want the histogram to be positive. I need the histogram to be green uh, as it was back here. You can see there my histogram was green. That is my first step in the process, and Netcare is not yet giving that to me. If we see some upside in Netcare uh, at some point, then certainly histogram will turn green, and then we draw our line in the sand, and I've drawn my line at that point. It's sitting around there. Uh, my line is at, uh, if I take it and drag it, the line's at about 342 would be my entry, but we haven't yet got the histogram confirming. So there's uh, Netcare for us. Uh, so he has PSG Group. Now, because we were looking at a weekly chart, it would default to weekly. So it's going to default to your last time horizon you were looking at. It will leave the lines as you draw them. The lines will be left there. So don't stress the lines. But what you will have is it looked at a weekly. We come back. We're looking at a weekly again. So here is PSG. And here we had the, the uh, for close of Friday, we had Instagram certainly moving positive. It had been, we've seen it picking up uh, last couple of weeks. Again, this week, where do we put our entry for PSG? I'm putting it on my line there, which is around 217. So PSG, 217, we're in biz. We're happy. Uh, and we can drop this now to a daily so, okay, it's having a rough day today. That's fine. Uh, let's pick up a little more space there and a little more space above my head. So 217, 218 will be our entry. We could make it too more aggressive at 220. Uh, sorry, at 200 could also be our entry, which would be a more aggressive entry. Uh, where is our stop loss going to be? Uh, let me get a little more time horizon here because I'm only looking at a couple of months. I want a little more time. So there's a wonderful place for stop loss, and it is lurking around about there. That might be too far away. I'm going to drop the line in there initially, and then let's zoom in a bit and see. Now you see at that point my stop loss is. So my stop loss is around 170. Uh, so entry around 270, stop equals 170. Risk per trade would be 40. 47 Rand. Uh, a couple of folks are coming through and saying they like the, you know, why not split the difference between the, 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 the 210 and the, the uh, entry there. In other words, instead of a 220 or a 200, why not a 210 entry? Yeah, I'm, I'm not uncomfortable with that. So maybe actually put your stop around about that. So your entry at around 205. So we can actually drop that entry to around 205. Stop loss would still, I'm going to leave it at 170. And what that means is 35 risk per trade. Remember, we're running with a 50,000 Rand portfolio, which means 1,000 Rand per uh, 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 trade. Uh, so we divide by 35, which is our risk per share. So we would buy 29 of the Aspen shares, so PSG shares, when and if it confirms. It hasn't yet. So now what we're doing is our daily work is, so now PSG is on our watch list, right? So we're saying, cool, PSG. So what we can do is on PSG is we can actually set ourselves an alert and we can say, you know what, P 
PSG at a 205 economic indicator alert. No, you just want a straight price alert. PSG at, at uh, uh, 205. Bang me an alert. Lex, now we're actually potentially interested. As I said, today it's under pressure. That's fine. Neither here nor there. The other one I wanted to look at was Standard Bank. So Standard Bank, we need to drop back to our weekly. That's the thing I always forget, folks, is I'm always sitting on myself on a, on a daily chart or weekly, and I always forget the time horizon. Uh, so Standard Bank was actually one of those trades that worked quite nicely. Uh, so if we take it to 15 Feb, if we change our time horizon. So what I'm showing you here is a historic trade just to show the, the process of. So if we use close on 19 and say, just show me a finite amount of data. Why have I done that? <clears throat> because this is where the histogram actually popped up. So now we can't see the future. We, we know what the future is, but we can't practically see it. At that point, there was my histogram. Where's my entry for Standard Bank? I would have put it around the 125, 126-ish level. Uh, dropped to my stop loss on Standard Bank. Probably would have been around about the... I would have bought my stop loss in at around there, at around 110. So it would have been 16 risk per share. Uh, and if we now broaden it out, yep, there we are to today. Uh, that line is now irrelevant because it was our entry line. My stop loss line, I've undoubtedly moved higher. I would have moved it up to that point. Um, at this point, I'm probably actually going to move my stop loss up to around there, which is around about the 130 level. So we would be in Standard Bank at this point, and we would be at around 130. And then the other one to have a peek at was Woolies. So the first time you do this, it sat down on Sunday and it took me a, a fair chunk of time to go through everything. Again, remember, take it back to my weekly chart. And then once you've done it, you've got a whole lot less happening. So Willie's triggered a couple of weeks ago. There's my histogram cross, boom, boom. But I've put my entry price at that point around there. It's currently toying with it. So call it 93 Rand is going to be my entry on Willie's. Uh, we almost got there yesterday. We almost got there today. We're not yet there. Uh, Willie's uh, 93 equals entry. Uh, stop equals drop to daily. I can leave that in place. So where do I put my stop here? So, I mean, the obvious place where to put my stop is unfortunately all the way down at sort of 76 Rand. It, it's simply too far away. And going with what Colin said is my stops are around about 10%. So I'm probably looking for a stop that's going to be, I'm going to position my stop uh, around about 83. So in at 93, uh, out at about 83. If we come back to that level, we really are going back down. So call it 84 on the stop loss. So two we're waiting for, PSG, Standard Bank. Uh, sorry, PSG and Woolies, 205 entry for PSG, 93 entry for, for, for Woolies. For now, we park it just there. Uh, Keith, you're asking, once the trade is underway, do you trail the stop by eyeballing the chart or EMA? So I just eyeball the chart. I, I am just – so, I mean, let's drop an EMA in and let's – so let's go back to one of those ones that we would be in. Uh, let's jump to – let's jump to – Standard Bank, I keep on shutting that down every time. So Standard Bank, we're in. Let's see. So I'm just eyeballing. Uh, the trick with an EMA is an EMA is in essence what I call a, a dumb stop loss. And I'll show you why now as we pull up the, the um, Standard Bank chart. So technical, this is where you find them. Uh, there's my MACD. I don't want uh, – I want EMA. I want only one EMA, please. I don't need hundreds. And I want it to be, let's try the 15. I'm going to pop a second in just so we can test the 30 as well, uh, see if we get a little bit better with either. There we go. They're both in place. Now, your 15 is at about 136. The other is at about 132. The point with the 15, uh, which is that first EMA, the top one there, is that a pullback to that sort of level is fairly you know, not going to be unexpected. And it kind of takes you into that zone. And I wouldn't want to be exiting in that zone because I think we're actually going to find some support there. So we might drop a bit below it. 
and then we get ourselves stopped out. And that's what I mean where it is in sense. It's a, it's a dumb stop loss. You know, to me, where would you want to do it? If you want to be aggressive on your stop loss, you're going to put it sort of just below that zone at maybe around 133, 134, which would put you just around about there. That could be an aggressive positioning for a stop loss. I'm not going aggressive with these stops at all. I'm working the theory that we're taking a gentle, we're entering on a weekly chart, we want to give it time to do some running and to see how it goes in particular. Folks, those are the ones that caught my attention, but there's a bunch of others, and, and I'm going to run this webcast, so I'm not going to be in a hurry in any sense. There's a bunch of others that uh, uh, sort of popped up, so I'm going to run through them. If you've got questions, drop them in the Q&A box. If you've got a top 40 stock you would like to have a look at, absolutely, let's have a look at a top 40 stock you would like to see. Uh, loading up Barclays Group Africa here. Again, let's drop back to my weekly. So uh, that's what attracted me on Barclays Group Africa. So the, the MACD is confirmed, but the price hasn't because that's where – so when the MACD first confirmed, which was there, that point there, um, nice, but I put my entry at about – what is that? 165. Uh, and we are waiting. We haven't yet. All we have had is sideways movement in 165. At what point would I cancel this and call it, you know, no longer interested in the trade when my MACD turns down? When my histogram goes red, then I'm no longer interested in the trade. For now, BGA above 165, absolutely. Let's add, let's take out Standard Bank. Let's put BGA. Uh, 165 equals entry. Uh, stop equals. Uh, where am I going to put my stop? I'm pretty sure I know where I'm going to put my stop. Yeah, I'm going to put it down there at around 130. Uh, stop equals 130. That's a little far. That's almost 20% away. Uh, if we're not going to put it there, then I'm going to want to put my stop. I'm going to stick it around there, which is around 143. I can live with a 143 stop on BGA. So there's another potential one coming up. Uh, let's pull Discovery. So the one I looked at, which I thought, hey, Richmond, because Richmond's been sold off forever in a day. But as soon as we pull the Richmond chart, we can see we are a million miles. Patrick, uh, would it be considered too late to get into Standard Bank at this stage? Short answer, yes, because our, our entry was a fair bit behind us. We have, you know, the trade is nicely in the profit. And, and the point is, another one will come along. So, I, I you know, missing a trade, I'm never going to want to jump into a trade late and after the event. So, Richmond turned. I mean, there it technically had turned green in us, um, but it's just been looking fairly ugly. Where would my entry be? Uh, so, that's a daily, I want a weekly. See what I mean by making the mistake? My eye catches it. <clears throat> ah, so Richmond is. <clears throat> so Richmond seems to have found some support down the low 80s. Disclaimer: I was buying some Richmonds yesterday at 83 and change. Um, we need that MACD to turn, and because we're in a weekly chart, it's going to take a little while before it starts to turn. Uh, let's go pull up. Um, Minaj is talking uh, old mutual. Let's go have a pull up of old mutual. Old Mutual did pop up on my list, did it? It did. Mutual, we're on weekly. So Old Mutual is kind of saying to us, I mean, histogram. Okay, so histogram is green this week. We need it to be green for Friday. So first we want that histogram to confirm through to Friday, uh, assuming it does confirm through to Friday. And I hate assumption. I absolutely hate assumption. I would put my entry at around about the 42 rand level. Uh, stop loss is nice and easy. Stop loss I would put around about the 30. Uh, six level, uh, but first let's wait for, for it to, to, to confirm something for us. I want to drop down to daily to confirm that stop, like it. Uh, Old Mutual first has to give us a, a, a decent uh, close this week. Uh, more questions coming in. Sassel. <laughs> Luke, someone was going to ask for Sassel. And if you weren't, I was going to show it to you anyway. <laughs> Uh, Rory got your question on Braid. So, so what's your notice? And you'll see it on Sassel, and then Rory will come to Braid, and we'll see exactly the same thing on Braid. Uh, so we go ourselves to a weekly chart, and the short answer is ugly. 
So MACD is down, has been for since, uh, well, it was last green. No, it was last green in May. So June, July, it's been going down. Uh, we needed to turn. We absolutely needed to turn. So we could look at Sassel. We'll look at it when we do our, our reversal uh, patterns in, in September, depending where it's playing. But at this point, <clears throat> so we've got Sassel, and we say, you know what, Sassel, love you or not, as the case may be, but no thanks. Yeah, not playing with you today, not interested in, in, in the party at all. Uh, Brait, which was... Uh, <clears throat> Peter, yeah, so long only trading plan. And the reason why long only trading plan is because, firstly, stocks spend more time going up than they do going down. Uh, and secondly, because on the downside, stocks are so volatile that it just doesn't make, it's just not worth the effort. It's just too volatile for it, for, for the downside. We get stopped out, things goes crazy. There's just no, no particular point to it in that sense. So, you know, just long only in, in the process. To my mind, short trading, yes, we need to get it right. Great fun, but man, it's hard to get right. So there's Brait. Uh, same story. Uh, seems to have found some support around the 120 level over the last month or so since Brexit pretty much. Um, but we haven't had a positive histogram. So we had some positive histograms back there. No, we didn't. We had some positive histograms back in November of last year. And you will note that when that happened, it started to go sideways. It just started to go absolutely nowhere. Uh, Graham, you want EOH, notwithstanding, as you point out, not top 40, but let's go look at EOH. So I went top 40 for pure liquidity reasons. Uh, you could expand it beyond top 40. You could take it into a wider market. Um, but then, you know, to me, I, I like the liquidity in the top 40. I'm quite happy with trading that. So here's an, okay, so here's EOH. So histogram went green back on for July, so I'm going to change my date so we are not uh, cheated by what we can see. So there was my histogram going on EOH. Uh, where do I put my green line? Uh, probably be a little aggressive on it. Put it at around 153. Uh, drop to a daily. And my other line has completely disappeared. It's completely disappeared because... Now that we've come forward in time. Um, so there was my entry all the way back there somewhere. My stop loss is probably going to be somewhere around, well, at this point, around the 136-ish level. But really, we needed to start playing games, with, to, stop, to stop playing games and to start stop loss around 135. We're, at the moment, it's going nowhere. It's not doing anything for us. We needed to, to come to the party and give us some hope in that space there. Um, Maria, I'll get to Steinhoff now. Uh, have I done back testing? So I did. Uh, I, I so I don't do classic back testing because of the way I, you know, to program the back testing is is not practical because what you can't do is is uh, uh, give yourself. Um, you know, programming where I'm doing the lines and the like, because the lines are, are obviously uh, 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 eyeballing it in a sense. But I, so, I, but I went and and, and eyeballed uh, over a couple of years, picked up some trades, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and and a couple of things popped out at me. So we're averaging about two trades a month, which is about 24 uh, trades per 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 year. Um, we're of that ratio, we're averaging uh, 16 winners uh, and eight losers. The losers were losing us ungeared, <clears throat> 8%. Obviously, the gearing comes into that. Uh, and the winners were making us, again, ungeared uh, around uh, 21%. So we had a 2 to 1 win-loss ratio in terms of we win twice as many trades as we lose, which I think is quite high. And I'm not sure that we can sustain it. That's a 66% win-loss ratio. And I think that's perhaps overly high. I think in time it might shake out. And that shakeout might happen when we have a, a bad sell-off, a bad bear market. This was done over the last uh, two, I think last three years, pretty much a sideways market. So I think that will shake out. And our win ratio, when the winners were 21, our losers were eight. So certainly we were ahead. The system works. The trick is we need to trade it through a bear market, which could be, uh, a heck of a long time. 
Uh, Christia, could you use this to identify shares I'd like to buy and hold forever? Christia, absolutely. So, and this was one of the conversations I had with someone after the event at uh, IG last month, where, <clears throat> so you like a stock, you, you, and we'll come to one Steinhoff in a moment. So Maria is asking about Steinhoff, the stock that you say, okay, I like it. It's great. I want to own it forever. Let me find the most opportune time to be buying it. And then you use this to get you in. So in other words, you're doing it for your long-term buy and hold. What you're doing is you're blending technicals and fundamentals. And if you go to our last bootcamp session, we did exactly this. So we said, okay, let's first identify the share on your fundamentals, whatever that might be. And then you come along and say, now let me use some technicals to identify the entry. So Steinhoff going nowhere for at the moment. Histogram is still red in that space there. We need the weekly histogram to turn up for us. Uh, Graham, I see your question. I'll come to it in a second. Um, uh, average holding period of profitable trades. So Keith, it's a great point. Your average holding period of profitable trades was around about eight months. So your question is, uh, does the long interest erode much of the profit? And no, and here's why. So short answer, it does. But here's what you're doing is you're only gearing the portfolio to two times. So by gearing the portfolio twice, what it means is that you've only, and we've got the example here of a 50,000 Rand portfolio, um, you're gearing it to, to as much as 100,000. But when you enter 100,000 in terms of, 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 of exposure, your margin on that 100,000, and if you look at these two trades that we're already in, and I'm just going to use them as our example, um, these two trades, uh, margin is 500 on the one and uh, 1,000 on the other. So we have 1,500 Rand geared. We're probably only ever, I mean, we're unlikely to go up as much as 10,000 Rand of our portfolio as margin. So yes, we will be paying interest on 100,000 when we're fully in, right? Because that's how much money we have exposure to. But we're receiving interest on 40,000, if that makes sense. So because we were receiving that interest on the 40,000, it offsets. It doesn't completely negate but it offsets. At this point in the equation, we have got uh, 48,500 cash in the account, 1,500 in margin. Actually, we're receiving more interest than we're paying. And that was one of the critical points of, of designing the system and putting it together was if you're going to hold positions for as long as eight months, and some of them, one of them, and I can't remember which one it was, ran for 14 or 15 months, that interest becomes heavy. So then you've got to make sure that you manage it. And it's how the pieces all fit together. I don't want to overgear a portfolio anyway. I would never push a portfolio more than twice geared, uh, you know, three if I was feeling, you know, absolutely, uh, 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 I don't know, like a crazy trader, would I gear my portfolio as a whole three times? Um, in which case, it leaves that large pile of cash. So because we pull portfolio gearing down, that reduces overall portfolio risk. At the same time, that happens to have the impact more cash in the account, earn interest, offset on the cost. Uh, if I want no gearing, yep. Yeah, so you can absolutely trade this with no gearing as well. Obviously, we're talking it here in a, in a gearing environment, but you could just trade straight equity. Uh, IG at this point aren't offering straight equity, but you could just go and do these trades with with. Uh, 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 Lost my train of thought. You could just go to normal traditional broker and just trade straight equity. Graham, you're talking about Finney, Indy, Resi. I'm going to have a look at. Let's have a look at how those look. Uh, STX, IND. So here's the Satrix Indy, which I trade in my lazy system. Uh, we're on weekly, so at this point, telling us nothing. Um, yeah, no, no excites there whatsoever. In fact, if anything, this is looking weak. We had got a buy on it, and then we got kicked out, and then we back again. Uh, Satrix Finney. Uh, Satrix Finney getting interesting. We've had some strong moves on the Finney. So histogram is green today. So this week it's green. We need to see where it goes on Friday. But at this point, Satrix Finney is looking uh, like if it, it, all things equal, and there's a long way to go between now and Friday, I'll be at a public holiday tomorrow. Where would my entry be? I would probably pop my entry just around there, which is around 1620 or there's about. Uh, drop to daily. 
and let's pull up my stop loss. I would put my stop loss at around 1460. So certainly Satrix Finney is one to keep an eye on. And then the other is Satrix Resi. Uh, so here is daily. Let's drop that to weekly. So Satrix Resi is green and has had a green one forever and a day. Um, and it went green way back one Feb. So let's go and change my date range. What I do is I just change the chart so we're looking at it without seeing the future because if we can see the future, that will cloud our mind. Um, <clears throat> so here's the first time the fact this, the Satrix Resi went in and gave us the, the, the buy signal. Where do we put it? So there's a nice obvious point around there, which is around 28. I'm going to push it a little bit higher, about 29, uh, 5 Feb. And I can tell you what's going to happen as soon as I drop to daily. It's going to say we are well into that trade. It is confirmed nicely. You would currently be long Satrix Resi. That was our entry line, so we can delete it. We would want to add a stop loss line, and I would put my stop loss line down there. So our stop loss line is around 29. So this would have got you back in uh, a while ago, and now you're in the trade and have a stop loss sitting there. Peter, uh, do you keep possible trade manuals uh, or using the watch list? I'm not sure I understand the question completely. If I get it wrong, throw it back to me. So I, I, I have on my desk here all the bits and pieces of paper, which I've, I've narrowed it down. But what I'm doing is I'm keeping the lines on the charts. So ShopRite should have a line on the chart because this is a trade we would have entered if we were trading it. Uh, it doesn't. Ah, I thought it did have lines on it. But certainly, I mean, if you if we go back to do, 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 the Aspen one, here we go. The lines are staying on the chart. So when I eyeball a line, it saves it. It keeps it for me. So the line is there. And then I've got my pieces of paper with my notes. I know, incredibly old-fashioned, but uh, I like paper. Uh, so what you're saying, Graham, within those. Yeah, you could. So you could go and take the Finney, the Resi, and the Midcap. The, 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 the Midcap, Finney, Resi, and, and uh, 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 Indy. The trick, watch liquidity. Some of the stocks within those indices are quite very un, uh, unliquid. They don't have a, a hell of a lot going through them. Um, does IG offer reliable index feeds for lazy system weekly charting needs? Uh, Tony, yep. So what you're doing is you're charting the ETF. Which is perhaps which is not as clean as a, a a normal. So you know when I'm doing my lazy system, and here I'll pull up Emmy Broker. Uh, there is my indie chart for Emmy Broker. Let me go to that one because I much love this one. So we are long this index at the moment in the lazy system. We went long at about that point there uh, in first of July at around seventy five thousand. Still long the index. This is only to the last Friday's close. I haven't updated this week. The index is always going to be clean, and it's the problem I'm running into with the offshores. So I've got myself an s and I've got a FTSE, and I've got a Nikkei 225, but these are all the futures contracts. Um, so, what you'd, and that, so, so what you do is, you, as we used here, in essence, you are charting the ETF. It's not as clean as charting the, the, the underlying, the actual index. It, it does work. And so in my experience of, of back in the day when I used to chart the ETF, and I think I did it for about two years or so, I got one trade that I shouldn't have been in. That was it, one trade. The rest all worked perfectly well. Yeah, so Clive, the entries and eyeballs. So we get the MACD gives us the trigger. The MACD says, this has turned, this thing's going up. Now we need to be getting into the trade. And at that point, it's an eyeball. That and also the stop loss as well are both eyeballs. So it is a case of we, we get the, the, for want of a phrase, we get an alert that pops up from, from, from uh, uh, the chart. And that is a, a mechanical process, and we can program that into the system. But the, the entry, the actual level we're going to get into is then going to be eyeballed. Uh, do you always wait for green Instagram and uh, following Monday, not on MACD cross? Correct. So let's go back to a chart here. Let's go look at Anglo Gold because Anglo Gold is a stock I own uh, in my momentum portfolio because it has momentum. So uh, you're absolutely right. I'm looking that green histogram is my first uh, 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 point that says to me something is happening. So I dropped to a weekly chart. First point, go weekly chart. So... 
where did we get the so we've got red histogram red histogram green histogram back in december so on anglo you the entry would have been just above that high so your entry in anglo gold ashanti would have been around about 135 136 into the stock and this is a top 40 share i can't remember if it was back in december because remember anglo gold ashanti has been in and out of the top 40 but you wait for it to turn green then you say cool now let's back to Klaus point you now then eyeball it and say where do you get in and you then position your stop loss if i were long the stock an aggressive stop loss around 280 a less aggressive stop loss around 230 uh and you might want to split the difference on that if you were long on this system uh can an alert be set when the go green <laughs> andre over to yep you can too so you can do some funky stuff here so let's go to bhp bulletin because i can tell you now that bhp bulletin is going to be looking ugly so i can set an alert and how it alerts you it'll send you an sms if they have your cell phone number it'll pop up on your phone if you have the app on your phone and it'll send you an email so oh no look at that Okay, so on bulletin, the, the MACD has again gone red, uh, which means that when it goes, if we have a positive week on bulletin, and then my entry point will be just above that. So my entry point will be around 214. Uh, so now we want to set an alert. So you can do economic or indicator. We want indicator. Uh, chart resolution is going to be weekly. Price, I'm not interested in mid. I want last trade. I don't want bid or ask. Those aren't real. I want last trade. Indicator I want is MACD. Uh, what do I use? I use exactly what they offer. Absolutely. Um, MACD histogram uh, crosses. Signal line. Boom. So when MACD goes from below to above, I will get it immediately or at end of candlestick. So what I would say is once, and I would say give it to me immediately, what that means is I'm going to get the, the uh, 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 email notification, and I might get it on a Tuesday. That's fine. It says to me, I add it to my list. It says on Sunday, I need to go and delve into this now. So I've got a couple of the alerts set up. Just none of them have triggered for me as yet. But there are a couple that I've stuck in uh, that I'm waiting for, for, for the alert from, from IG. So because I'm on a weekly chart, it grinds along slowly. So... We've got those couple of trades which are lurking. Where are we there? Uh, let me close that and go to. So we've got a couple of trades. We're in Aspen. We're in Mr. Price. We would have been in Standard Bank. We have got three. We're currently stalking PSG, uh, Barclays Group Africa, and uh, Woolies. Um, with our entry set, our stops are ready. So, so now we just wait. And, and we can go and set alerts on those prices because remember for the entry, we're dropping down to a, a daily chart. Uh, PT, so you can do a scan, but you can't do it on the, on the basic charts I'm looking at here. If you go and take the more advanced charts, uh, you can do it. I didn't use the advanced charts because they cost money. They don't cost a lot, 300 bucks. Um, that's 3,600 a year on a portfolio of uh, only 50,000. Um, that, uh, that adds up. So, it, you know, it, it's a cost. And I'm like, so it means I'm putting time in. Is my time worth 3,600? Mm, yeah, I mean, we can debate that. You know, so I'm spending time every weekend. The, the point being is, 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 for me, I like to manually do it. Um, I always worry about scans, although they've always worked for me. But I like to be manually, you know, get my hands dirty in a, in a, in a, in a so to speak, so that I can see what I'm doing, so that I can make sure it, it's, it's, it's working. But also, it keeps me in tune with the market. It keeps me watching. It makes sure, you know, it makes me have to pop in every week and have a look-see. So I, I've never really used the scan way back in the early 2000s and late 90s when I was trying to trade everything in the world, I would run scans. You know, I would, and I would run a scan on the entire JSC and I would trade a stock that had liquidity of, you know, I stock that trades every, you know, four shares every December type of nonsense. But these days I much prefer the spend the time. You know, once we're up and running, that first session takes time. But once we're up and running, uh, it starts to get a lot easier and, and, and a lot simpler in the process. Uh, so, ladies and gents, questions are drying and we are hitting our time limits. So, uh, I want to do backwards. There we go. Um, 
this session, the video will be up uh, late this afternoon or tomorrow. Uh, it will be under the, in the original original video. So it will be on, uh, where am I going? Where am I going? It will be on this page. So it will be a uh, complete CFD share trading system. I'll add today's video to that video. What I want is both videos in exactly the same place. We'll drop it in uh, down at the bottom down here so you can find this video lurking there. And then as it says on the screen, we're back at 16 August with IG and webcast. Uh, 6 p.m. we're looking at index trading. We're going to be doing my 721 system webcast 29 August. And then 20 September, we're going to be coming back with reversal patterns. Um, because I, and I usually look at three reversal patterns, infrequent but massively powerful. Uh, and then in October, we're doing binaries. Why are we doing binaries? Two things. U.S. selection, we can get binaries on it. But also because, man, every bucket shop, every scam master in the world is offering binaries and they, they're ripping you off. So I'm like, hang on a second, let's look at binaries and is there a way to do them which is not being scammed? And I think it is. I, I think there's a lot of risk with binaries and I think we've got to be extra clever and most people should probably stay away. But uh, let's see what we can do with binaries. I think we can probably do something with them. Uh, Domingos, my absolute pleasure. Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Uh, everyone, have a great week further. Enjoy your day off, uh, whether you're voting or not tomorrow. Have a restful day. Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, Sharon, you're not in South Africa, so you are working tomorrow. My apologies to you for that. Uh, I hope it's summer wherever you are. Uh, everyone, have a great week further. Cheers, all.